when I was taking my teacher education, I was looking at inquiry, and I think a lot of times there's this mentality that it's let the kids go play and they'll learn something, mm -hmm. and um, it's not. It's definitely not something that's just free reigns and go for it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of planning that goes into inquiry, mm -hmm. but for me, it's harvesting and harnessing that natural curiosity that kids have, and it's also it's true learning. So when you're an adult, you don't go to your textbook and you have a curious, or a curious question. You're thinking of things you want to know and how do you figure out the answer to that and you have a natural learning process. So I think it's really a natural way of learning mm -hmm. that we need to facilitate. I think that um, you need to be strong in classroom management, but oftentimes when there's not opportunities for kids to explore and to be curious about things, that perhaps there's a connection or a correlation between classroom management being difficult. Not always, mm -hmm. but they need to have the freedom to explore and to answer those questions. So what I've done is I've set a tone in my classroom that your behavior, there's clear expectations for it and that's regardless of what approach we're using. Mm -hmm. And because they understand that that's the expectation, we have more freedom mm -hmm. and they're able to, to go within the parameters of what's accepted in our classroom. In my own experience, what inquiry has allowed me to do, like I said before, was given me freedom to be inspired and mm -hmm. to inspire the kids to learn. So with the new social studies curriculum, the approach is, I think, quite a bit different than perhaps the older social studies curriculum. Something that I focus on is multiple perspectives and something else that we are looking at um, specifically are histories and stories of the ways of life in Canada. So mm -hmm. respecting and honoring that culture is developed through time and that everybody's story is in, important and unique. Mm -hmm. So looking and honoring um, a lot of the values and attitudes that are in the social studies curriculum, mm -hmm. when you have inquiry, it opens up the process for that and for them to explore and demonstrate those values and attitudes. And that's been the biggest thing for me is that with values and attitude, you don't necessarily teach them. You allow them to engage in things where they're developing those values and attitudes. Well, in my classroom, there's been quite a few projects that we've undertaken. And with those projects, there's um, planning with the end in sight. Mm -hmm. So looking at what are the curricular outcomes that I need to address and am mandated to address. So understanding by design. Exactly. So working backwards. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking at what's the big question? What's the point? Why are we learning these things? Mm -hmm. And sharing that with the kids so that they're aware of why they are engaged in this, why we're learning about this person and this person and their effect mm -hmm. and moving from that big question back to how do we accomplish that. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the best practices that I see inquiry as being a really strong fit with is that effective planning. Mm -hmm. um, another best practice that inquiry lends itself to is assessment for learning. Mm -hmm. um, the kids are given control over their learning and they are given accountability and responsibility for their learning. So with some of my projects, um, well actually all of my projects, there's a component for self-evaluation mm -hmm. and reflection and they have to know whether or not they've met the I can statements or the curricular outcomes. So the curricular outcomes are often our base for inquiry. Mm -hmm. How did this person affect Canada's history? Mm -hmm. um, what does the story, your own personal story, your history, how does that affect Canada's diverse culture and heritage? Mm -hmm. And then they go through that process of inquiry and after they've completed that or and as they're thinking they are, critically yeah, as well. they're thinking yeah. critically, they're thinking outside of the box, they're mm -hmm. having to justify and explain, but they're reflecting and evaluating on what they've learned. So it's not just we close the textbook and we're done. Mm -hmm. It's that lasting understanding and that enduring understanding. I'm very excited about this project. Mm -hmm. It's something that it just goes to show actually how when you choose to engage with your students, it will stick with them. When I was in grade five, I had an awesome teacher and he wanted us to connect to history. So he had actually 
done a, a smaller version of what I'm trying to do with my students mm -hmm. right now and he had had us dress up as characters from history. So I have taken that idea and it stuck with me for years afterwards and I thought how can I use this because it was so influential to me. I still remember who Madeleine de Verscher is and how often do we read about her. It was so authentic. It was so authentic yeah. and it was building that understanding and this was, you know, very effective in my own learning. So I thought to myself, how can I do this with my kids? When I look at the new social studies curriculum, I was so excited because in grade five, it's all about stories mm -hmm. in that second topic, and it's all about explaining how um, that affects our understanding and what do the stories of these people, um, how do they contribute to our diversity? Mm -hmm. So what we've done is um, created this project where the the problem is that there's a case an epidemic of misunderstood and forgotten history in our nation which is true in fact and so the kids have been sent on this mission so it's very mission impossible they're all mm -hmm. agents they have their own I agent can hear numbers the music. yeah and they <laughs> i'm so excited i have to yeah. try and you know um they all have this mis mission to bring back a person who is significant to Canada's history. So in integrating language arts and social studies for grades 4, 5, and 6, and then differentiating for grade levels, our school is working towards solving this epidemic and preventing it from continuing. Mm -hmm. So the kids now have chosen their person, they have to persuade headquarters why they are going to um, bring this person back to life, in Canada's history explain the significance and in that they're being inquirers they've chosen an individual it has to meet the criteria being mm -hmm. Canadian mm -hmm. being significant being someone that you know that has made an impact on Canada's history and now they are researching we're meeting all of the expectations for the research component of language arts and social studies but they are in control of that and I'm facilitating so I'm teaching them ways and that they can approach it, but they're driving it. And it's really exciting, and I can't wait for it. I can't wait to see what they come up with. <laughs> well, again, I go back to it's exciting, and when I'm motivated, that wears off on the kids. Mm -hmm. And I know that people say that, it's but contagious. It's, it is. It's very true. When I'm excited and motivated, then I'm modeling what learning should be mm -hmm. and what, what it can be mm -hmm. is that it's an exciting thing and I think social studies gets a bad rap sometimes and it's not just memorizing dates and it's not um, it's not just knowing what page in the textbook you get it from mm -hmm. but inquiry has allowed me and it's a it's a process that I use because I can motivate my kids it's exciting for me to come and mm -hmm. teach them because I'm learning along with them so and it's just, it's really neat to see how they develop and to see their ideas and it's very open-ended so you get a truer picture of your learners in your classroom when they're allowed to demonstrate it in a way that makes sense to them within parameters of course.